Hey, it's Frank with Frank Does It. A client wanted me to make a 34-inch Lazy Susan, but I had no way of cutting a circle that big. So in this video, I make a jig capable of cutting five-foot circles. Frank Does It. For this jig, I'm just using half-inch Baltic birch plywood. And it's nothing crazy, guys. It's just two pieces of plywood. Well, actually three, but you'll see later on in the video what the third piece is. Anyways, I'm just cutting the main two components. It's the base and the front lip. This jig is really super straightforward. It's easy to make, quick to make, and you can actually make it for pretty dang cheap. Okay, so I'm just trying to figure out how I want this to end up. I'll just use the fence here so I can kind of remember where I'm at. I'll cover this hole up because I want to have better dust collection here, but that's also going to cover the adjustment knob. So I think if we lock it down there, probably be good. And then I also want to get a miter bar glued onto this so that when I'm rotating the piece to cut a circle, this front lip and the miter bar will help to keep the jig itself from moving around. So let's do that. So we'll throw the miter bar in and I just already made this off camera, but I'm sure you, I'm sure you guys know how to make them. So I'll throw some nickels in here. And that's just to elevate this guy. I'm sure you've seen this trick other places i'm going to pop this guy open and leave it in its slot and then throw some double-sided tape on that bad boy i'm pretty sure you can figure out by now what i'm aiming for here and then this hole here doesn't i'm not really too worried about it being too precise I'll just throw a piece of double-sided tape right there hopefully it'll lift off onto the wood instead of sticking to this and that can give us a little indicator of where that's going to be so i think now if we throw some super glue on uh, this miter bar and then throw the thing back on here that'll glue the miter bar in place and the double-sided tape here and there hopefully will help me to transfer where i want to cut um, some holes for dust collection here so throw some Starbond CA glue on here. Probably overkill. I don't need to use accelerator. So then I got my fence here on purpose so I can try to register everything up against the fence and then gently set this guy down. Hopefully everything will stick to this. And when we pull it back up, we'll be in business. Moment of truth. Now I got the miter bar in place and then a reference here where we need to cut a hole. So now we can take our one and a half inch Forstner bit that fits in this hole perfectly. You see it's got this little point divot thing there. We'll just stick that bad boy in there. It's perfectly centered and then just give it a whack. That gives us a little dimple there to drill. We can go ahead and pop this bad boy off. I'm going to take a small brad point bit and drill all the way through because I don't want to take my Forstner bit through this side right away because then I'll be blowing out the, the actual show side of this piece. That'll give me a starter hole for my Forstner bit on both sides. So now I can stick my little, that little point on the Forstner bit in that little hole. And I'll start, I'll, go, I'll drill about halfway through and then switch to the other side. Flip it over. Here's the other side of my hole. Clean on both sides. Perfect. I can throw this back on here. Then we gotta figure out how we're gonna find that one. So just take another piece of double-sided tape. This time I won't stick it to the bottom here. Maybe I'll make it a real small piece and I'll just set it right here. Sticky side up and I'm not gonna peel the other side off. That should work. Throw this back on here. Find my miter slot, there it is. Okay. 
Take your little brad point bit again. Should be able to just pop a little hole right here. You'll just go with a seven eight. Same thing here. I don't want to go clear through, so. Over. Moment of truth. Not too bad. And I can raise the bit up. Pretty sweet. All right, so now we'll just cut a little piece of uh, 3 16 steel bar. I got it at the big box store. This will be our pivot point for our circle jig. I think I'll just cut this at about 3 quarters of an inch. And I'll take it over to the bench grinder and clean up these burrs. Okay, so now that we got our little pivot pin cut, I'm gonna mark with the square a line here. I'll drill a hole for the specific circles that I'll be cutting and then the pin will just fit in those holes. And right here, I'm just eyeballing down this hole, center, trying to get it perfectly centered on the router bit that I have in there. That way we can be as precise as we can. This is a Freud spiral upcut bit, half inch. Okay, so I'm gonna be cutting two circles right now for the project I'm working on. I'll be cutting one at 24 inches, which is a 12 inch radius. And I'll be cutting one at 34 inches, which is a 17 inch radius. I'll go ahead and mark with blue tape on this drill bit, make sure I don't go too deep. I wanna drill in about Three eighths of an inch into our jig. And the brad points are nice because you can, you have a lot less chance of them wandering around. Just try to be real careful when you're drilling these to not move around too much. I'm not the best at eyeballing, but give it a shot. See how these fit, pretty good. Barely any play, same. So really anytime I need to cut a new size circle, I can just measure from here and do the radius of that circle, drill another hole, I can move the peg as needed. But right now I'm just gonna do these two because those are the ones I'm working on. Okay, let's mark center. To mark center, you just draw a line from corner to corner. And where those lines intersect should be your center. So that's where I'll drill my hole for my pivot point. This is the same 3 16 inch brad point bit that I used on the jig. It's a Montana brand bit and it's a perfect fit for that little rod I cut, that pivot point. Okay, now I'll go ahead and trim it up with the uh, Jigsaw real quick, just cut the corners off. Okay, let's go ahead and flip this around. Throw our pivot point on here. Thirty-four exactly. That's my jig. Not a new concept, but it's kind of nice to be able to have all this table space and actually cut a really, really big um, circle on it. I thought about making a bandsaw circle cutting jig, but I'm glad that I went this route. This gives complete support to the workpiece. 
I'm able to incrementally raise the bit um, until I get a final cut. I mean, this is a perfect circle. I hope you like the jig. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Um, go ahead and follow me on my social media accounts. They're listed down below. And thanks for coming by, guys. God bless you.